The current Teaching Excellence and Student Outcomes Framework, or TEF, assesses provider level undergraduate provision, but it is being extended to assess disciplinary or subject level provision. This video gives a brief overview of preparations for what we call subject level TEF. The video is part of a series we're producing to support providers and panellists who are taking part in the second subject TEF pilot, which is running over the 2018-19 academic year. We've also made this series of videos publicly available to help the wider sector keep up to date with progress on the pilot. We're publishing short videos throughout the pilot to help explain particular aspects. We're also publishing a separate series of videos to support students and providers who are interested in applying for a TEF Year 4 award. Both series are available on the Office of Students website. These videos are designed to highlight key information in an easy to access format, but they don't provide definitive guidance. For definitive information, you should refer to the series of documents which were released on 22nd of October 2018, which relate to subject level TEF. These include the government's consultation response, a set of findings from the first pilot, which was conducted over 2017-18, and then two guidance documents. The first guide explains how the second year of the subject level pilots will be conducted, what we're testing and evaluating, and it also explains how participating universities and colleges and their students should take part and how the panels will undertake assessment. There is an accompanying guide which also provides detailed information about the data that is used in the second pilot. Links to all this supporting documentation are provided at the end of this video. If you're entirely new to TEF, it's worth setting out just what TEF is at a very high level. It's an exercise that assesses quality over and above the existing quality assurance arrangements and it adopts a broad definition of teaching excellence. Assessments are made against criteria which cover three aspects of quality, teaching quality, the learning environment and student outcomes and learning gain. It's a process of independent peer review. Assessments are made by an independent panel of experts that include academics, student representatives, widening participation and employment experts and employer and PSRB representatives. And they're drawn from a wide range of providers, subject areas and locations. It's a process of independent peer review and it's very important that the panelists make holistic judgments against all the evidence. And it's also incredibly, incredibly important that there is meaningful and embedded student engagement throughout the process. The implementation of TEF has taken a phased approach. TEF Year 1 was an exercise in which all providers who passed a baseline quality standard received a Meets Expectations Award. TEF Year 2 was the first exercise in which judgments were made by a review panel. They used a combination of metrics data and additional evidence submitted by providers to reach their judgments. The third year of TEF, TEF Year 3, was informed by the outcomes of the government's Lessons Learned exercise, which focused on the practical operation of the TEF. TEF Year 3 also saw the first year of subject level pilots. We tested two different approaches and these pilots ran alongside a government consultation and also independent student research. We'll look at the findings from each of those exercises later in this video as they inform how the second pilot, which is taking place in year four, will be conducted. It's worth saying there have only been minor changes made between TEF Year 3 and TEF Year 4 at provider level and also in both Year 3 and Year 4 the pilots have operated completely independently from the provider level exercise. OK, let's have a look in a bit more detail at what we can expect over the forthcoming academic years. In academic year 2018-19 there will be the second subject level pilot and alongside that there will be an independent statutory review. We anticipate that decisions on full subject level TEF will be taken in autumn 2019, taking into account both the pilot and the review findings. After that, subject level TEF will take place across two academic years in 2019-20 and 2020-21. And the first set of student outcomes will be published around spring 2021. From then on, TEF will continue to be on a biennial cycle. It's worth also reminding uh, viewers that TEF becomes a regulatory tool. It will, become a, it will become a requirement for providers with over 500 HE students to participate, and it will be an ongoing condition of registration that applies from August 2019. It isn't, just to be clear, an initial condition of registration. So let's have a quick recap of what we did in the first pilot. 
We tested two models of generating TEF ratings at both subject level and provider level. They were known as Model A and Model B. We carefully evaluated how well they would work in practice, looking across a whole range of detailed design and delivery aspects. In particular, we were really careful to think about how these models and how the cross-cutting elements would work at full scale. So when we roll the full subject TEF out across the whole sector. Within the pilot, we also tested measures of teaching intensity. The specification was largely based on the current provider level TEF, so we used the same metrics and assessment criteria. And it's worth also saying that the government consultation sought views on the detailed proposals around these two models. The Model A approach was known as the by exception approach or sometimes called the top down approach. In this model, provider level assessment comes first and it was very similar to the processes used at provider level in years two, three and four. Subject level ratings were then generated in two ways. What we did was we triaged subjects. So we first determined whether the subjects performed differently to the provider as a whole. And to do that, we looked at the metrics performance of the subject and the provider level. Where the performance differed at subject level, we defined it as an exception subject. You can see that on the left hand side of the slide here. Those subjects that were defined as an exception received a full assessment. So providers had to write submissions and panels assess these fully alongside the subject metrics. The subjects could receive different TEF ratings to the college or university as a whole. The remaining subjects, the non-exception subjects you can see on the right hand side of the screen, they were not assessed individually. They received the same final TEF rating as the college or university as a whole. Model B was the bottom-up approach where subjects were assessed first. Whilst ratings were generated for each subject, in this model we used a group submission format. So, in subject one on the left hand side there, the panel would review the subject metrics alongside the group submission and the group submission also included information about subject two. Once all the subject ratings had been confirmed, they then fed into the assessment of the university or college as a whole, using an algorithmic approach called the subject-based initial hypothesis, which considered both the rating and the numbers of students in that subject. These are very high level descriptions of the model. For more information about the two models, have a look on the Office of Students website. There's a link to a webcast at the end of this video. So we published the findings from the first pilot alongside the government response back in October. No ratings were published in that document though, so we did not identify individual providers. And here are some of our key findings. Firstly, both models had featured elements that were intended to reduce burden, but ultimately we found that they added complexity to the exercise. We did find that ratings were successfully generated at both provider and subject level in both models using the existing provider level framework. Generally, the method of assessment based on combining metrics and submissions worked well, but there were limitations in using data at subject level. Very important to note that student input to submissions was really valuable where it was present. However, it was quite inconsistent and there will be more effort needed to make sure that we can do more around student input into submissions in the future. We also found that for provide providers, there was little difference in the cost of the two models. Generally, the assessment process of having panels covering a group of subjects worked very well, but we are very keen to test how scalable panel structures are through the next set of pilots. We also found that grouping subjects at the second level of the common aggregation hierarchy, CH2, worked well, providing the right level of aggregation. However, some refinements to the classification could be made and we'll be testing some refinements through the next pilot. So the government consulted on a range of questions relating to subject level TEF over 10 weeks between March and May 2018, as well as the written responses, a series of sector events also fed into the exercise. As you can see from the bullets here, there was, a generally, uh, there was generally a good amount of coherence between the pilot findings and the government consultation outcomes. And a key thing is that we found that we ought to test a refined model in the next pilot. There are a number of areas where we found that uh, we ought to retain 
existing aspects, so retain the CAH2 subject classification system, but test refinements and revisions through the next pilot. We're also continuing forward other aspects around the criteria and metrics, for example, and also contain continuing with the current approach of allowing variation in the distribution of ratings. The consultation also found similar issues uh, to the pilot that needed more exploration in the next pilot. And in particular, we're going to be testing issues around data limitations. So we detect, we'll be testing reportability and accessibility thresholds in the next pilot. We'll also be looking at what more we can do around interdisciplinary provision. The consultation also looked at the duration of TEF awards and found that TEF awards ought to last for a minimum of four years, with the reapplication possible every two years. A final decision around the maximum length of duration will be taken after this year's pilot and the independent review. The government consultation also found that we ought to remove the teaching intensity metrics from the TEF. As I mentioned, there was also student research conducted uh, alongside the pilot and the consultation. It was undertaken by IFF and involved two surveys between November and December 2017. Applicants and current students uh, were tested on three main issues, their awareness and perceived use of the TEF, subject classifications, and the relative importance of different factors to them when choosing where to study. So that brings us to the second pilot. And the second pilot was informed by the consultation, the findings from the first pilot and that student research. And we conducted a series of design workshops over the summer of 2018 to inform how it would be operationalized. In this video, we won't be looking at the model of assessment in detail. There's a separate standalone video that does that for you. What we will reflect on here is that the revised model that will be tested in this pilot consolidates the best features of the two models tested in the first pilot, but seeks to address a number of issues identified. The revised model is comprehensive in that it assesses all provision in the university or college. So each subject is assessed and in parallel, so is the university or college as a whole. What I will do is set out the general timeline for the pilot. As you can see here, there are two broad strands of work one of which is focused on providers and submission, and one of which is focused on panelists and assessment. And each stream is split into kind of three windows here. So we've just finished selecting providers and panelists, and between December and February, uh, providers will be writing their submissions, and we'll also be getting the panelists up and running in terms of training them, providing them with lots of guidance too. At the end of February, the submissions will come in, and then panelists Will get fully into assessing the information that they have. Once the submissions are in, we'll also do some formal evaluation activities with the providers, but it's worth saying that feedback and evaluation continues across uh, all of the work strands uh, throughout the whole pilot. We do treat it very formatively and we're listening to issues that are arising and responding to them uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. In this year's pilot, we're going to be generating statements of findings as well. Now, statements of findings are a written narrative explaining how panellists have reached the judgments that they have. We'll be testing different ways of producing these statements and we'll be testing how useful they are with both students and with providers. Now, as I said earlier, we anticipate that full decisions around the final design of subject level TEF be taken in autumn 2019. We also anticipate that the, at the end of the pilot there'll be a number of development workshops with providers and panellists where we'll be exploring uh, potential solutions to issues that have arisen throughout the course of the pilot. We'll be evaluating the pilot against a set of important themes. So we'll be looking at meaningfulness for students and well, how well the exercise engages them and whether the model generates ratings that are more meaningful and useful for them. We'll be looking at how well the model incentivizes and drives a focus on enhancement, how well it incentivizes improvements to learning and teaching, and how well it incentivizes positive outcomes for all students. We want to make sure that the model is capable of recognizing diverse and innovative forms of excellence across a diverse sector and across diverse provision. We'll be thinking very hard about how well the model encourages providers to deliver positive outcomes for students from all backgrounds, 
very much speaking to the OFS's wider interest in supporting widening participation in social mobility. We want to make sure that the evidence base and the assessment processes are robust, making sure that the model allows panels to make robust judgments. We'll be looking at effects on provider behaviour and the extent to which the model avoids driving unintended consequences and how also we can minimise vulnerability to gaming. We'll be looking at value for money as well and thinking about burden versus benefit and if there are more efficient ways of conducting particular aspects of the process overall. In all of our evaluation activities, we will be very mindful of the challenge of scaling up the exercise. We think that in the next pilot, we'll be producing in the region of 700 ratings, but we currently estimate that a full-scale subject-level TEF exercise would require in the region of 3,500 to 4,500 subject assessments. There are a number of things which could impact the overall number of subject assessments, such as the number of providers who successfully register with the OFS, but it is a significant step up. And in recognition of the scale of the full first subject level TEF exercise, it will now be conducted, as mentioned earlier, across two academic years, 2019-20 and 2020-21, to enable it to produce robust outcomes. This will also allow more time for the findings of the second pilot and the independent review to be fully considered before moving to full implementation. OK, so having set out some of the challenges which we'll be examining in the pilot, it's also worth saying what the independent review will be asked to report on. The expectations for the independent review are set out in the Higher Education and Research Act and include, for example, the process by which ratings are determined under the scheme and the sources of statistical information used in that process. OK, so thank you for listening. I hope that through this video you now have a better understanding of the development of subject level TEF to date and what some of the key issues are for the pilot over the forthcoming year. Of course, if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch.